guys welcome back to my channel if you are seeing me for the first time i'm intentional fever and on this channel i film about faith lifestyle studying abroad and social work so please if you like to join us here you are more than welcome to do so just hit the red subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so that you get notified each time i upload new videos and to you my amazing returning subscribers thank you guys so much for always coming back to watch my videos guys in today's video as you've seen the title already we'll be talking about public health studying masters in public health in the united kingdom and i am not alone you know as always on this channel it's all about lived experiences and i've got someone with enough lived experiences on this subject matter to come here and share with us as a matter of fact if you can remember in one of my videos where i talked about courses with high job prospect i remember mentioning public health and i hinted you guys that i have two friends okay who already studied public health and they are practicing so because of them i said that i think public health has high job prospects in the united kingdom well it's based on their experience and i'm happy to announce to you that one of them is here with us to share um his experiences he's a very good friend of mine i've known for so many years now like i've known him for since 2000 and 13 14 really and uh, we are both here in the uk now which is so exciting really really exciting so guys yeah a lot of you have been asking me how what are the job prospects can you connect me with these your friends what should i do i'm studying mph many people are talking about mph is it really worth it should i come for it i got this offer so many questions really around public health and today he'll be sharing with us you'll just be seeing my face in this video but you'll be hearing from him and believe me guys just get ready to like take notes and listen to all that he has to share he's currently in the uk and of course he's practicing public health and he was an international student in the uk prior to having his tier 2 visa so without much ado let's jump straight into today's video so our guest you are highly welcome thank you for this honor i mean i'm so excited that you agreed to film this video with me as in i can't thank you enough <laughs> thank you so 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 much like it's an honor you welcome you welcome to intentional fever youtube channel he's one of my early subscribers you know so um uh we just want to ask basically one or two questions about public health um what would be your advice so many people have been asking so what would be your advice to anybody in the united kingdom studying masters in public health what should they know what should they do especially to increase their chances of getting a sponsored job after their studies uh first of all it's a delight huge delight to be in your intentional fever uh youtube channel for faith for studies and all <laughs> so yeah it's good to be here and of yeah. course we've enjoyed Many years of friendship, <laughs> you know. So it's, it's really a good thing to be here. Yeah. And um, so let's just go straight into the agenda for today. So masters in public health and the prospects afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, I want to demystify uh, a myth that concerns international students. Okay. So when you are going abroad to study, particularly in the UK, I can speak for the UK because the US is probably slightly flexible mm. but the uk is a closed strict system yeah and then um, it, it gives you little or no opportunity to do anything outside the box little or no opportunity mm. so we've got to be intentional like intentional fever and then so the first myth is working while studying the reason is for example for somebody who is coming to study a course and you want to get a job after studies mm. uh, and then so your main business is studying number one working to fund your bills or pay tuition yeah and the one i'm going to add to it which is actually uh, equally as important as the first two is finding a place to study uh, to volunteer okay. and i will elaborate more on that so if for example you are studying and working which takes you know is stressful in itself mm -hmm. if you are working on in a job so for example you are working in a care home it's probably not going to give you the skills you need as a public health practitioner okay 
because the skills you build is probably for a healthcare worker or a support worker. Yeah. Which is not probably, probably not going to work for a public health practitioner. That's probably where I'm coming from abroad. Yeah. So you've got to volunteer or work in a place where you can build or collaborate on the skills you have before, mm -hmm. the public health skills you have. So if you can get a job in a local authority, yeah. or in any public health agency, yeah. it's probably better than working in a care home mm. or in a store mm. or in a warehouse yeah. where everybody works. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not able to get that job because it's highly competitive and it's probably not easy to get, like getting a job in a care home yeah. or in a warehouse, for example. So the best bit then, which is most likely the more popular option, mm -hmm. is to volunteer in a public health body. Okay. The most common is, is local authority because they have a lot of public health posts. They have a lot of public health posts. Okay. So that's the like the common one. There are also some local charities where you can also volunteer. Most of them are volunteering. Uh, and at that place, you can build your uh, your public health skills. Mm -hmm. The other one, which is even more competitive, is the bigger one, the, the bigger public health agency, which is Public Health England, now called UK Health Security Agency, where I currently work. Okay. So, it, so there are three categories of places you can volunteer or work. Work is probably going to be tight, difficult. Yeah. But volunteer is probably a little easier. Yeah. So I'll say local charities, local public health charities, charities. Mm -hmm. there are community charities where they do a lot of public health work that you might find wherever you're located in the UK. Okay. Uh, that's the first one. The second one is the local authority. Yeah. The third one is UK Health Security Agency. Okay. So those are the popular places where you can find uh, opportunities to work, like mm -hmm. I said, which is going to be tiny, but volunteer will be the most preferred option you might get. Yeah. Now, that means that you have to brace up yourself for hard work. Hard work in that you are studying full time. Yeah. You are working to fund your bills or studies. Yeah. If you are not able to work in this public health agency and you are not volunteering on top. Yeah. And I would say if you aim at one or two days of volunteering, if you are working, please work with them full time. Your twenty hours per week, fantastic. But if you are not working, aim at maybe one full day, eight hours per day. That's nine to four or nine to five rather, or split it four hours for each day. Say, for example, you volunteer four hours on Monday, volunteer four hours on Tuesday. Yeah. That makes it eight hours per week. Yeah. Then if you are able to squeeze out time, obviously to study and to work, which is fantastic. The reason why I said it is that getting to the public health system in the UK is not straightforward it's very very competitive mm -hmm. very very competitive and i would say i'm in nigeria yeah if i see a nigerian applying for a job and someone is applying for the same job maybe a Ghanaian applying for the same job yeah. and they have the same qualification the same skills yeah i'll probably pick a nigerian ahead of a Ghanaian. it's okay. just natural yeah yeah it's a natural it's phenomenon. natural yeah so if you're in the uk you are a uk citizen and a Nigerian like me is applying for the same job with the same skills. Even if I have slightly better skills than the person has, they probably consider their person first. It's just a natural human, yeah. human. You get what hmm. I mean? So your essence of volunteering or working public health is to gather skills that put you ahead of other people. Yeah. Yeah. So that when you're applying and you're putting your experience or what you have done, they can relate with you ahead of the person they know better. Yeah. And can offer you the job. So that's why I said build your skills first. Build your skills first. Mm -hmm. And how I got to know this. So when I was in my master's, I was working obviously and I was studying at the same time. Yeah. And my supervisor at that time noticed that my I was not contributing as much as I used to. And she was afraid that I was going to drop my grades. Mm -hmm. So she called me and advised me that you know I need to concentrate on my studies. So she then recommended me for a public health tester day. So it's like open days that people have, you know, mm -hmm. secondary school open days, so you can see what they do. Yeah. So it was there I got to know about almost everything about public health in the UK, mm -hmm. how they practice public health, the public health departments and all. So my aim then was to volunteer with the local authority yeah. at that time. 
at that time, my networked with the director of public health in my local, in my local authority. Got the details. I sent email. I was already arranging how I can volunteer in the local authority. Mm. But then, COVID came. Mm -hmm. So that was starting. But as God would have it, so this is God. It's not my own. It's not my. It's not my. Uh, it's not my arrangement. Because there was opportunity to volunteer. I'm a doctor. Yeah. So I initially wanted to volunteer as a GP assistant. Okay. Just to help COVID. That was, that was what I wanted to do. But as God will have it, I just saw public health in one of the things I advertised. In fact, the link that he sent to me was for GP. Mm. I, mean, I just saw public health now. I said, okay, let me also apply for public health now. And I applied for public health. And that's why they called me to come and volunteer in public health department. Mm. As God will have it, during the period when I was volunteering, it was a paid volunteering role. So you mm. can imagine. Wow. <laughs> so as God will have it. So this, this is God. It's not, it's not me. Yeah. So... During when I was volunteering, because of the volunteering, they advertised some uh, roles and I got in. So I currently work in the health protection department of UK Health Security Agency. Okay. Now, that's why I will always say, you know, volunteer. And the reason why I got it easily was because they found that I had the skills that they want yeah. as part of their training. So when they advertised and I applied, applied it was yeah. easier for me to get in. Because I was already volunteering. Yeah, you were in there already. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was in there already. So that's why I will always advise that anybody that wants to stay back in the UK should Volunteer. volunteer in any relevant, either community, uh, public health trust or something, local authority, or in the wider uh, public health England. And the UK has one of the best uh, public health systems in the world. Mm. So you always find a place to to volunteer, that's the fact. And then the other thing is, as you are studying, start looking out for jobs. Now, the essence of looking out for the jobs is probably not to apply at that time. Mm. It's to look out for the skills the that they world. require mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the job they advertising. Mm -hmm. So if you look at, they are looking for, say for example, research skills. Yeah. You, when you are volunteering, you tell whoever you are volunteering with that, you want to be involved in any research they are doing. Mm. So that you will build your research skills in that. Yeah. If they are looking for, uh, I'm applying for a job now, they are looking for some skills, flexible working. So currently I'm working flexibly. I can work from home and I can work from the office. That's one of the skills they are looking for. Mm. So when you are volunteering, you can ask them that, please, can I work? So out of two days you are volunteering, one day will be from home. Yeah. So that you can have an experience of flexible yeah, both. working. Yeah. Another thing they're asking for is knowledge of uh, recent government guidelines, social determinants of health. So when you're volunteering, you, you tell them that you want to know about government guidelines, how you can interpret them and translate it to public health action. Yeah. Now, they can give you work, or if they do have, they can recommend you to yeah. someone yeah. or another person or another agency where you can get that experience. Yeah. So when you look at all those different, we call it JDs, job descriptions, you can know the skills that you need to build to mm -hmm. apply for either that same role in the future yeah. or similar jobs in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And it's third thing is that because the UK is a closed system, like I said, you need to have a plan B. Mm. Now, if you do work in the UK, for example, where else can you work? So, for example, when I was coming for masters, I did not plan to stay back in the UK. Mm -hmm. My plan was to work with international agencies, so WHO, UNICEF, uh, UNESCO. Those yeah. were places where I wanted to to volunteer with, to work in. So, of course, COVID came and spoiled all the plans. But now, I believe that in my two years or more of working in UK HSA, I've developed a lot of skills that when I need to apply to those agencies now, it's probably easier for yeah. me because number one, I build the skills. Number two, I work with a credible organization, which also is stakeholder with WHO. Yeah. So if I tell them I work, I'm coming from public health England, for example, yeah. they'll probably consider me higher than any other person that has worked in developed countries, for yeah. example. Yeah. You know what I mean? So those are those are the tips that I will say. So uh public health practice in the last two years. Is going to change drastically in the next couple of weeks mm. because they uh, they uh, absorbed close to a thousand public health workers during COVID. Mm. Now they are laying off 
almost to third of those people now. Wow. So you can imagine that most people are going to be left with on that. Yeah. And the only fact is that I'm an immigrant. I'm not British. Yeah. The reality is that reality is that I could be one of those people that they will let go. Mm-hmm. But as a Christian, that's not my reality. No. But looking at it from, you know, reality, reality, reality yeah. I'll be among those people that they will let go. Because like I said, if I'm, if I'm Nigerian and I'm considering other people, I'll probably pick a Nigerian who has the same the set same of skills skill. yeah. ahead, of, ahead of the foreigner. Yeah. So what I'll say is that when you're volunteering, build those skills. Have option B. I'm a doctor, so it's probably easier for me. I can go and finish up my GMC exams and start go back to the clinic to work. Mm-hmm. A nurse can go and write up her exams and go back to the hospital to work. Yeah. But for someone who's not a doctor, a nurse, for example, or a physiotherapist, for example, it's probably more difficult for them. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why I would advise that always have a plan mm-hmm. B. Or if you don't want to go back to your country, yeah. always have a plan B. If it's not the UK, yeah. maybe it's another international organization. And the only way to enter those is to build those skills that they require. Oh, yeah. So look at it for their job descriptions. Mm. Then while you are volunteering, build those skills that they need. Because in your application, you will you use what we call star. The sort of situation, the task, mm-hmm. the actions, what you did, and the results. Yeah. And those are things that you are going to put in your application. Yeah. Now, the only place the, where you can put them in the application is that you have done those things. So if you see a job description, take it to your workplace. Try and look for a scenario that you can work on those things. It's a research, like I said, work on the research. Yeah. The, all the things you did in the research, you enter the data, you analyze the data, what you use the data for, the result of the, mm-hmm. of the, out, of the research, are things you are going to put in your application. Yeah. And because they always look for your recent referees. So if you put your manager, the person you work with as a referee, then you can say that, oh, the um, uh, favor did so, so, and so, and so, mm-hmm. during the time when she worked with them. Now, that carries a lot of Wait. marks for you, yeah. a lot of weight for you when you are writing and submitting your application. Yeah. yeah. But that's my own general advice. So to just wrap it up in a few words, number one, volunteer when you do your uh, master's degree. Yeah. Look out for jobs, the job descriptions, and try to build the skills that will match up to those job descriptions. And finally, always have a plan B for mm-hmm. the UK. Oh, we have a plan B. Thank you for that. Um, when you were talking, you mentioned something about some charities, public health charities that one can. Can you do you know anyone probably, or is there any tip you can give anybody on how to find these charities or anywhere apart from local authorities where one can actually volunteer in? Uh, so of course you can Google them. Um, secondly, uh, our lecturers know a lot of these things. So they know the local charities that can where you can build your public health skills. Mm-hmm. So I'll say maintain a good relationship with the lecturers, the supervisors, and ask for advice. Mm-hmm. And usually, I mean, during my own time, some local charities are partnership with the public health department of my school. Mm-hmm. So whenever they need students to come for mm-hmm. uh, to volunteer or to affairs, they can always recommend students to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so apart from Google, you can maintain relationship between the lecturers. Oh, that's good. Thank you for that. So just in a in a nutshell, what would you say is the job prospects for public health in the United Kingdom, especially for international students, having international students in mind? Ah, uh, I would say, if you asked me this question last year, I would have said there's a huge prospect. Mm. Because obviously there was COVID and yeah. then... We did quite a lot of a huge stamp base. But now, because the policy has changed and we are now living with COVID, and currently they are downsizing the current staff strain. Yeah. So uh, I would say the chances are slightly reduced. Or uh, because those things are possible to be honest, but yeah. I mean, talking realistically, the chances are slightly reduced. Mm-hmm. That's why I always say that I have a second and option B mm-hmm. that you can always run to. Or well, at, at, at the same rate, I mean, I'm, I'm applying for a job currently, so there are still jobs that are open up. But well, you know, for international students, you're looking for a job that will sponsor your visa. Yeah. So, but that is the so you might get a job, 
But getting a job that was consular officer is, you know, easy. It's is the next step. That's why I said you have to pay your skills. If you have sufficient skills, they will look for you. Mm. If you apply, they will pick you. Some of them can go to the essence of, you know, running the Elta Skelter to make sure they retain you. That's why you need to build your skills. And that's why I'm always big on, you know, for those hearing. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. I think you really said a lot of things. And um, work can always make the decision. So it's up to you. If you want to study public health in the UK, it's up to you to weigh all these options. Take all these advice that he has given us, take them on board and make the right decision. Something that you know that can actually help you, you know, because it's sometimes it's not usually straightforward to be honest. And sometimes life in general, in some ways, are not really straightforward. So it's just for you to sit down, calculate it, and know what works best for you. And uh, volunteering, experience is a lot. They always value it, whether paid or voluntary. So try and take all this on board. And I wish you all the best in your journey. Okay? And of course, the two years post study visa here is very important now because people can always leverage on that, start with it, it's why they look for public health job or whatever that can give them sponsorship because with your two years for um for study visa you can actually be working in a place and with time they can consider getting sponsorship for you you know things happen so i think you are still at a better chance unlike our guest when he came here he got, he's not even eligible for post study visa he was not. It was after him, the set after him, <laughs> that it started. Yet he managed to get a job. And like he said, if he were asked this question last year, he could have said, oh, there are, there are chances. And of course, last year was when I filmed that video mentioning public health. But COVID, we are really living with COVID now. We are living with it. He doesn't want to go. And then we have no choice than to live with it. But yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for coming today thank you so much for giving us this privilege thank you so much for sharing all these tips we really appreciate you and maybe we'll bring you back who knows you never can tell. <laughs> thank you for having me today. yeah it's a privilege to be yeah so thank you guys for watching till now please don't forget to like this video give it a thumbs up comment share subscribe to my channel if you have not and i'll be definitely be seeing you in my next one until then stay blessed remain intentional and take care of yourselves bye, bye.